What happens on the 28th of October, Friday, the 28th of October, what happens? Grade 12, we are writing mathematics, paper one. We are writing mathematics paper one on the 28th of October. It's going to be a three-hour paper for 150 marks. And so now, everybody, I'm going to start with an overview of mathematics paper one. I told you we're writing on the 28th of October, Friday. It's about quarter to nine. You are sitting there. And the first thing that I want to tell you is do not worry about your difficulties in mathematics. At this point in time, I want to encourage you you must just study. You do the possible and the impossible will be done for you. So let's go to our first slide. Remember, first the overview of mathematics paper one. So now you see normal factorizing, the use of the quadratic formula, simultaneous equations, exponents and thirds, and your inequalities. This is your first question. And this form part of what? Of quadratic equations. So the first question in mathematics paper one is going to be normal factorizing, the use of the quadratic formula, simultaneous equations, exponents and thirds, and your inequalities. Now what I want to say is I put a clock on the slide because the clock is to tell you please this question is about plus minus 20 marks and you should not spend more than 20 minutes on this question remember you're going to try and go one mark per minute and 20 marks 20 minutes so quadratic equations question number one normal factorizing the use of your quadratic formula your simultaneous equations, exponents and thirds and inequalities. Now, when I say the use of the quadratic formula, you immediately know, you go to your formula sheet and you do the formula x is equal to negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a matrix. That is the quadratic formula. Normal factorizing is basically just factorizing a trinomial or taking out a common factor. When I say simultaneous equations, how are you going to recognize that it is simultaneous equations? We are going to say solve simultaneously, or we're going to say solve for x and y. If you see solve for x and y, you know it is a simultaneous equation. Your exponents and third, there will be maybe be one question in where you have to take your thirds to exponential form, and then inequalities. I want to quickly look at one inequality, and I want you to take this down. If I say inequality, I'm going to give you a sum, say x squared is less or equal to 4x minus 3. When I do the sum this afternoon, I'm absolutely confident that before I even explain this sum, you know what to do. For those of you who are still uncertain, you are not sure, what I do is I immediately get my one side equal to naught. So I will bring the 4x over, hence becoming negative 4x. And then we're going to take the negative 3 over, becoming plus 3. And that is less or equal to 0. You open up your brackets and you are going to factorize x, x, negative 3, negative 1. That's an easy factorization matrix. You're supposed to know that. But now, what do you do? You cannot treat this like a normal equation because you have an inequality sign. Two ways. You can either go into your number line. You get your critical point of this bracket is 3 and the critical point here is 1. So it's 1 there and 3. Don't put your 3 there and your 1 there. You first go 1 and 3. And then you substitute values in less than 1. Values, a value less than 1. Can we take 0? Zero? 0 minus 3 is a negative. 0 minus 1 is a negative. A negative times a negative is a positive. So on your number line, you're going to have plus, minus, 
and plus. I see some students saying, ma'am, we are not matriculants, we are grade 11 students. Grade 11s, you're doing this work. You did quadratic equations, you did your normal inequalities, so this will also help you. This is an overview for the matrix, but grade 11s, you will also benefit from the session, so don't worry. So I have my number line here, I've got a plus, a minus, and a plus. What do I do after this? You check at your inequality sign. My inequality sign says smaller than. For those who don't know that is smaller than, can you see if I do that? Kafu kleiner. So you are looking for smaller than values. Now what is smaller than? It is a negative. So my solution will lie here where the negative is. Can you see that grade 12s and grade 11s? And so there is my negative. So when you write your solution, you can see that it has to be in between the 1 and the 3. I hope that you can all see that. For those students who do not work with the number line, you can work with the parabola. Okay, so there's my parabola. You all know that the 1 and the 3 are x-intercepts. There's my 1. There's my three. Now, can you see again, they're looking for smaller than. Kafu kleiner. Smaller than means below the x-axis. Below the x-axis. So, your solution is going to be here. Can you see? This is below the x-axis. So, it is in between my one and my three. That is how you write it. If that sign was switched around. If I had greater than, can you see? B for bigger. If it was turned around, then you would take the solution plus and that plus there. Just watch how I write it. The plus goes greater than 3. So I say x is greater or equal to 3 or less than 1. I hope you understand. If I put a line under my inequality sign, my answer will have a line in it. If there is no line under my inequality sign, your answer will not have a line in it. So this grade 12 is your question number one. For the grade 11s who are tuned in, no problem. This is also your question one in your paper one. And I said it's more or less 20 marks. Look at the clock. Don't spend more than 20 to 22 minutes on this question.